Okay, so you're working on Wall Street. You think you have an amazing job. But you know what you should be thinking? How do I stay out of jail? How do I stay out of prison? Our next guest says he might just have all the answers. Mark Powers is a top white-collar crime attorney and a national leader at Baker Hostetler Securities Litigation and Regulatory Enforcement Practice. He's joined by our very own Charlie Gasparino. The five things to do to keep yourself okay. from landing behind bars. Jim Comey, the, the FBI director, generally doesn't show up to your house, but some other nasty guy in a suit little FBI thing on the side on his lapel. They come right. and these guys are trained, I know this for a fact, to scare the crap out of people when they think you're guilty of insider trading. Okay, I'm there, you, they're, I'm looking at them. What do you tell me to do to stay out of jail so I don't do anything stupid? Because we know people do stupid things all the time when the feds come calling. Right, first thing, say nothing. Be you very can't even say hello? Say hello, say Thank you very much for coming here. Hear what the person has to say and say, listen, let me get back to you. You want to collect your thoughts. You want to have a witness to what you say to them because later on, they have the photographic memories. They're going to be taking notes of every single word you say to them. Doesn't it make so, you look guilty if you're like, oh, I'm shutting down? No, it, it's actually just the opposite, Liz. The, S, the FBI relies upon people doing what I consider to be foolish things, and that's just talking to them voluntarily. And they, and they scare you to try to be, okay, so suppose they actually do trick you into um, a, a conversation of some sort, which, these, let's face it, we're human beings, we like, uh, you know. Um, and I know people, listen, people have like urinated in their pants when the FBI, I know this for a fact. I spoke with a lot of FBI or agents. fainted. Fainted. Ma Matthew Martoma, the, of this, of the SAC, of it, formerly of SAC before he went to jail, fainted when B.J. Kang, the FBI agent, went to his house. So you start talking to him. You got to be polite to him, too? Well, you, you don't want to, they are the government, right? Which is our government. Right. So you don't want to be disrespectful. But the real bottom line is you need to make sure that you've gathered your thoughts. Because it's very important. And another rule to keep in mind is whenever you speak to the government, whether it's the SEC, U.S. Attorney, FBI, you need to speak the truth. You lie to them. And it's a natural inclination for someone that may have engaged in some sort of wrongdoing to kind of want to shade the truth, so lie that a little two? bit. Don't lie. Don't lie. Speak the truth if you're going to speak at all. Right. And you know, and the idea is, if you're going to speak to them, you need to re realize that, particularly if it's a securities fraud case, right. let's say it's inside a right. trading or something, where it may just get resolved on a civil level. Right. You don't want to turn a civil case into a crime. Right. You lie to an FBI agent. That's a federal offense. Only speak with an attorney. Now, here's something really interesting. Um, when. When, when the FBI showed up to Phil Mickelson on the golf course on an F, on a insider trading case, you know, a lot of people, they were trying to scare him. He said, goodbye, I don't want to talk to you, talk to my attorney. Guess right. what, this, that case kind of evaporated. Have a nice day, right? Right, and it works, right? Talk well, to you. Well, look, I mean, the bottom line is you definitely want, the reason why, and although it might sound self-promotional for right. my legal profession, but you really do want to have a lawyer. The right. lawyer actually serves a purpose. They act as an intermediary for you. They kind of make sure that what right. you say is prepared in a way that is coherent and, right. and tells the truth. And so, therefore, you kind of go with that route. But, the bo but another rule to keep in mind is you really don't want to speak to the FBI, to the SEC, until you've gone to the bottom of the facts yourself. They're not coming to see you for, to invite you to some sort of tea party. Right. Or a They're not one. your friends. There are people that are there to put you in jail. There are people that are there that are looking to try and figure out if there's a violation of securities laws, if there's a, vi if there's a crime that's been committed, and their job is to, to, to bring we, those cases. Do we, have, we, we basically have the five there, right? Tell the truth, be cooperative, don't give extraneous. Four. What's the fifth there one? There we go. Always oh, appear cooperative. cooperative. Okay. Always appear, appear cooperative. cooperative. I mean, the bottom line is what's going to happen. When you speak with an attorney. Um, Here's what I want to ask you. You were involved in the Martha Stewart case. Yes, I was. You remember that? You represented uh, which uh, Doug Faneuil. Doug Faneuil, who was the who broker's Martha assistant uh -huh. that, that allegedly was the conduit to give the illegal, the allegedly illegal tip to Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart was never charged with insider trading, criminally. She was charged civilly. She was charged with lying. Lying about it. Right. What do you think made her blow so much smoke? It was kind of an absurd... She, she claimed she didn't lie, but I, I, just my opinion, listening to the story she made up, it was pretty transparent. It didn't make sense. Why do you think she did that and not just kept her mouth shut? You know, I come from, from the perspective of someone that wasn't involved in those conversations between her and the lawyer, but I also always looked at it, wait a second, she went and met with the FBI within two weeks of them contacting her. There was no way that, in my view, that her lawyer or she could have read through all the computer files, read through all the emails, and made sure she was properly prepared to know what was there. So either she, in my opinion, ignored good legal advice about not going in so soon, right. or she, you know, was given bad legal advice. Right. Bottom line is, keep your mouth shut, say nothing, be Sergeant Schultz, 
I know nothing. I know nothing and be friendly. Just cooperate. Be nice. You, uh, co- go in and speak right. to them at the appropriate Here's time. Here's a cup of coffee. I know nothing. Get lost. <laughs> Mr. B.J. Kang and FBI. Right? It is great to have you. That was great. No, thank you That was like, us. and if that you was have trouble, sir, call him. That was called news you could use. <laughs> right? That's right. You know, even for people who buy stocks, sometimes right. the feds show up on your doorstep. Oh, yeah. It's a little weird. Why did you buy in advance of a merger announcement? Say nothing. Say nothing and be cooperative and call Baker Hostetler. Great to have you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Charlie. What? You write for the Post, right? They, oh yeah, Buffett. You were in the you were in the New York Post. That's <laughs> right. I forgot. Was I, well, I'm, you know, Liz. I read so much stuff every day, and um, what I love about you is that you, in many ways, set the trend when it comes to Buffett. Oh, thank you. No, I mean, like, listen, every other reporter covers him at these these big confabs, but one thing I will say that Buffett knows, he turns to Liz often, and Liz always makes news when he's there. she's there. She, it's not the typical, let's throw an underhanded pitch to but you're nice to the guy. Well, you know, Warren Buffett always right. said, uh, just so you know, like, throw hardballs at me. Right. I don't think he wants the easy pitches. I mean, right. he, but, but when it comes to net jets, which is something he owns right. they've got a long-standing labor problem with right. their pilots right now right. and the post finally picked up on the story and i thank the post for, for quoting fox business yeah, because, because we were the first to talk to warren right. buffett about this and now it appears that the pilots are if you believe the pilots union are leaving in bigger numbers because they're unhappy but with a lot the money they're getting. you know what a lot of people are afraid to piss off excuse the language buffett by talking about his labor dispute well, there were protests at the you you sure. had no problem asking zero problem and he respects you for that he had zero problem answering here's what yeah. he said when we asked him about the pilots who are very unhappy with what they're getting paid they average about one hundred and forty five thousand dollars annually and and uh they're on for seven days and off for seven days i mean they, they like the work arrangements they like the fact that they can enter the system at almost any place which is unlike with the airlines so we don't see we don't see our pilots going elsewhere but we've got a they, they've got a good they've got a good jobs and we've got a good business all right well it's important to note that tomorrow we're going to get the union side of it and we've got the head of the pilots union his name is pedro larue and of course we will call mr buffett again we now will find like, out the number now you're like all over the place i mean what, what? <laughs> What's going on? We're you were in the Times. No, no. I mean, what, what? my first time. You've been in the New York Times many times. I've never. Always been negative, in. though. There was an article about the Tony Awards coming up Is that in you? a week. That's me. I'm an I'm a Tony Award voter. Believe it. Now or not. I know why they want you to pose in Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> they that did. looks you... like a rejected Louis Vuitton ad, please. That's, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> so who'd you vote for? We haven't voted yet. We have to see all the shows, and there are about 40 of them, so as soon as we can. I, I don't Check watch the Tony. I'm not I'm a big on the Tonys. Okay. It's great. Do you it's like the Cleos? The Tonys I do, are... I do. The, the, the advertising. I'm more, I, I like the, the Cleos better than the Tonys. Charlie, thank you. What, what are you What are you eating? I tacos. A, I got an orange, a neon orange taco. I'm going to show you. It looks disgusting. Mark Powers, thank you very much.